<laughs> hey people, Broken Puppet, and this is how to draw a geisha face. Enjoy. How to draw a geisha. Now this one's going to be sort of like influenced by uh, traditional Japanese, but my sort of version of it. So we're going to start off with just a circle. And line down from the top, cover the bottom. So you sort of come down, curve the other way, bring the curve coming off the side of the circle, curve at an angle slightly at the bottom bit, come out sideways, come out of that circle so you have this kind of shape. Bring yourself like a curve coming through here. A little bit higher than halfway, so you kind of like go across this line in a way. So we get that, and you want to do an oval shape here, and then just cut for it, cut for it here, go up there, there, and you just arch that into that center point. Bring a curve down this side, curve back at the bottom. Bring another semicircle but just curving off the top above this, kind of the sides. Bring this down to touch. Curve okay, a nice big sort of circular shape just above it. Little circle off to the side. Little circle off to the side. And then curving out here, so coming from you know, about the same height as the head. Curve out. Then curve it in. Bring this little line just a bit here if you want and curve up to there once you hit that centre line bit there. This basically just gives you the structure of the hair. Circle there, you have a bit of an air. So I'm going to start off with the nose. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to curve it outwards and then inwards. As we go to the bottom, I'm going to curve around. Bring it out, up and down. A little bit the other side as well, just like so. Bring this little curve, just come from the top of that. So that's starting just half, you know, above this line. So from here, do yourself like an oval circle. Sort of there, do one there. Do it lightly, and then kind of look at it and see if it looks like the right position for eyes. You know, if not, just adjust it. And then what we're going to do is start from the corner. I'm going to curve up, and as we get to the outside of it, I'm going to flick it out. The bottom I'm going to kind of curve around, and come up into that. Little dark bit just on the inside bit there. Do this line around here. Just there. Just above it, we're going to curve this line up and out. Kind of head in the same sort of direction as the ice slant, just there. So it kind of comes there. I'm going to have this curve just coming here just around the side a bit. Just there. I'm going to have a kind of looking over that way. And then if the eye, we're going to have like a shadow coming off. So I'm not going to do anything at the bottom of that, I don't think. I might change my mind in a bit. Never know. And a mouth. And the mouth's going to kind of fit in this kind of angle here. So we're going to start off a line out, going past the nose, so you want to be past the nostrils. Go in, a little dip in that middle bit, curve up and come short with this side. So this side's longer, this side's shorter. At the centre, I'm going to come up quite steeply. Create a V in the, in the middle and then bend up to the bottom, just there. Create a little curve at the bottom of this, just there. On this side we're going to curve up and out. So similar to how we've done this side. Phones, phones, I hate the phones. Sorry people. Had a phone call I had to take. And just curve the next line, just coming out and curve up into it. So this one's a bit more of a steep curve, because obviously it's that towards the end uh, towards the edge of the face. 
Do it up there. Go around the. So it's kind of looking over that way as well. Again, the bottom bit is going to be shed out, so I know it's really going to go underneath for that. I'm, however, going to have this little loop just underneath here. And then the eyebrow curving up like so. So it's going to curve up, go down, and that kind of makes the part above the eye as well. And when we get above that, just curve the other way just a touch. And this part, we're going to curve this cheek out just a tiny bit. Curve down. And I'm going to follow this line around. Come up. I'm going to create a little overturn just at the bottom of the chin here. Just to give a hint at how to, you know, the uh, chin changes shape. Curve that. So you see, we've got this cool kind of angle to the face. You know, it's not just basic straight. That's what I'm looking for. Gonna have these little flashes come down here. I'm gonna cut these in red, maybe. Just making that up as I go along that one. Now coming up, we're gonna move up to the hip. So where we've got this first curve just here, I'm going to loop this edge, bring it around, and each one of these I'm just going to curve down coming across. Right. Going off the inside of this, we're going to have some of these bits coming out of here, so just bring out some straight lines, get to a length, make it a bit shorter, come out, make a little loop. I'm going to do so one there, one there, and maybe two blocky ones. So this one I'm here, and come there, and similar to the other side now. So just bring this out, shorten it, bring it out, create a little curve, come back, straight line. You can have them sort of kind of match up if you want, so it sort of cuts through the hair. Just readjust your angle if you feel like you're slightly off. Like I just done there. That's what the pencil sketch is always good for, you can easily adjust. No. Only go into the pen once you feel like really confident. I, mean, I know I jump into it best because I've done these a hundred times. A little bit of hair just curving off of here, just there. And the neck part just there. So you can really see what his face has come together now. And now where we've got this curve here, it's going to come like below the ear, and then I want this bit to come across and come just above it. So I'm only going to get this hint at the bottom of the ear. And then I'm just going to curve that back with the shape. Same with this circle here, it's going to keep following the shape of that circle. And that one, and then the same with his side. So it's going to curve following the shape of it. It's like so. Now what I do is just put in some detail bits. I'll find the right pins. No, this one I just picked up. Give me the ones these ones are. So I keep picking up the same old ones. Did I do it as Sharpie? Is that the one? Yeah, that's it. So I'm going to do some with Sharpie, some with uh, a fine liner. The uh, Sharpie is just going to be mainly for the outside edge. And the bits I want to stand out a little bit more than the rest. Just maybe like that top eyelid. We we'll center line the mouth. Might as well just do around the ear because it's going to be lacked out around it anyway. Little stick parts. If you want to get this perfectly straight, you can always use a ruler. Don't feel like that's cheating. I know my line works not always perfect, but I've been told I'm pretty good at those straight lines, so. I tend to just go straight into it.
Take your time with this, don't feel like you have to go same speed as me. I know I go through pretty quick. You know. Don't worry if what takes me about half hour takes you guys like a couple hours, you know, just take your time with it. It's all about having fun. Enjoying what you're drawing. Eyebrows. And that's going to come in with a uni pin fine liner, so it's about 0 0.8. Just putting the rest of that detail. The reason I do this is because I like to have a few different line weights in my pictures. Build that little line around it just for the uh, pupil. I feel like having a few different line weights just really helps the image. You know, it just kind of brings it to life. You know, I'll, I'll do a separate, I'm actually going to do a separate video just on the line weights to sort of show you guys just how much of a difference it makes. I'll do a couple of images and you can see how it looks just plain and then with a couple of different line weights kind of added to it. Because it really does make a lot of difference. And a couple of those little hair strands. A couple of little just like loose hairs just near them. And then just gonna start these lines across. Now you don't have to have them sort of symmetric, you can have them dis different distances apart if you want. I often do. These ones are going to sort of keep roughly around the same. So just following that curve shape and just repeating it over and over and over, just around that edge. It is important to remember as well, a lot of this line work isn't going to really make too much difference because we are going to go over a little bit in black. So if you have a little bit near the edges like there and say it isn't perfect, don't worry too much. Don't let it stretch out because you're going to be going over those little bits in black in a way. It's mainly for those little highlights in between to show the direction of the hair. So the lamp comes in. And those lines in the eyes I'm going to do with the uh, thingy. With the red ink. Just a little few detail lines, so just there, just maybe just on the inside edge of these bits. Just to give them an edge.
rub that pencil work. There we go. Now it's going to get me black. I was going to use my Windsor Newton brush markers and some pro markers. But you can use whatever you want. You know, don't feel like you have to use these. You can use paints, pencils, anything will do. So it's been a black bit there, black bit there. It's going to be a black edge at the top, black in the centre. It's going to be black in this bottom bit. Leaving a little hint of the lines which I'll fade out afterwards. But you see what I mean now? Like a lot of this is just going to be blacked out. But it's always good practice to have a go at the lines because doing the lines will eventually just improve your line work anyway. So, as well as it being for the art, it also will help you improve just generally as well. So same sort of thing here, I'm just leaving that black highlight, a little highlight across the edges. And this here. Remember, take your time with it, don't sort of feel like you have to go the same speed as me. Right so, put a little bit of black just underneath the eye, just underneath the nose, a little bit just in the corners. All fade out. Nothing too crazy with it. Then I'm going to grab my dark grey. Let's go with all those black edges we just done. Side to side motion is always the best with markers if you're using them. Same thing with like water paints, I thought we'll just tend to find with the brushes. The same kind of stroke. See almost overall of it now. It's going to come back with me light grey, which I have put. Is that the right one? Yeah, that do. Now, in this kind of paper, scrap paper, this will just fade off into nothing pretty much. So it looks dark when you first put it on. But give it a second to dry, and you'll see the true nature of the colour come through. So you go like that, like that. 
So you can see that's pretty much the hair done. And it's going to come back and blend out some of those other bits. So, like I said, I want to get a black fade out just underneath these eyes. So I'm going to blend out that line we've done. These little corners. The only bit I'm not going to blend out is a bit beneath the nose. I want that solid. Put on that chin just to show the shape of it. Little shadow just in that top part of the eye. Put a little highlight just inside the eye, so a little circle, shade around it, move from the other side as well. And just in the curvature, so this little curve here, it's going to blend inside that curve, there, just around there, shade in a bit of this nose, a little highlight just down the tip, flick that up. Put down from the top. Bit of those cheeks. Some of the lips, create a little highlight in the bottom lip just there. And slab it out. A little flip from the cheekbone, a little bit just come down the bottom of the cheek. You can look a little bit around the hair if you want, just like so. But it's not necessary. <laughs> Find a little bit just there as well, that's a trick. So now we've got that, we can start thinking about colours. Now, for this one, I'm going to have reds coming down those strips, so put my two red strips. I love doing these, this is like very contrary to my me, so I don't go sting this too much. This is like one of my signatures, I love doing that. But uh, yeah, I'm going to put a bit there. A couple of bits of red just on the edge, just got some little lines. Just so the colour carries through. I'm going to put red in the lips, but it's not going to remain red because I'm going to add some purple over them as well. Always remember with markers, you can mix colours going over them. They don't have to stay the same colour. So do that. Um, Grab me blue. This is Pro Marker. I'm going to use my blender trick. So I'm going to grab my blender. Hold the fine tip to the thick tip. Just hold it until you see the edge starts to go white. Once it's gone white, test it, see if it's see through. If it is, you're ready to go. Just start overlapping your colour. Until you see the colour start to come through, and then take that across. Do that again. So hold that till it comes through. See through. It's working until I start to see that colour. Roll that into it. So you see, you get a nice kind of blue shine just above the eye. So on this side now. Just in the cheek. And I'm going to get me yellow. Yeah, 
Not always yellow, but I quite like to colour my eyes in yellow when they're quite white in design to contrast. Just makes it stand out a little bit. Can I colour these bits in and just leave a couple of little whites just crossing through it? Just to give it a shine effect. And because it's lighter than the red, I can just go straight over that red. Gonna grab me a purple. Go over these lips. So you get this nice reddish purple colour. Like so. Like similar bit just on the top eyelid. Just like so. I might use this to fill in this gap just here. And then to carry this on through it a little bit as well, I'm just going to do some clouds in the background. Just do some semicircles. Now this purple comes out quite greyish, which I quite like on this paper. Wouldn't particularly want a strong grey, although it could look cool. Depends on the kind of way the design, I guess. And just add a new semicircle just to random bit, just to kind of fold out the design and such, you know, just kind of brings it out a bit. And then I'm going to grab me white pencil. This one's just a Faber Castell, uh, but I prefer Prisma. But they all do the same kind of job. So white in those little circles, just a little white, and a line in the eye, just a bit in that. Top up, just create a nice shine. If you're using white paper, you know, you can always just leave these areas and you get the exact same effect. So just run like you know the edge bit here. And a side bit of the face just there. Highlight the nose, lines coming up from it, a little on the nostril. A bit of cheekbone. On the side of the face, just a little bit above the eyes. Just any way you want to kind of show a bit of shape, you know. A bit top part of the lips. Just don't go too crazy with it. Can you get to a point and think, yeah, that's enough? Just stop there. So just gonna bring this little shine up. Right on the edge part, I'm not gonna go through the center, I don't think, for this one. That way just kind of gives it a different feel. Just in those little gaps we left. <laughs> I 
and there you have it. That's pretty much how to draw a geisha face. My sort of style. You know, it's quite fun, it's playful. It's got hints of the original, sort of like, you know, old fashioned paintings, but it's more sort of new schoolish. I mean, I won't really say it's neo traditional because it quite kind of breaks those kind of rules a little bit, but yeah, it's around there. But hope you like it. Comment, subscribe, like, yada yada yada. And a broken puppet, and I'll see you next time. Peace!